Hello, welcome back to Crafts Along with the Creative Chicken. Wendy here. Today I'm working in my Square Dilutions Art Journal and I'm preparing my page by giving it a quick coat of Pevio white gesso before I begin. Obviously, if you don't have Pevio, you can use whatever white gesso you have to hand to prepare your page. Once the gesso is dry, I've picked up four of my Distress Ink pads in shades of purple and pink. The colours I've used can be found in the comments section under the video. I'm just going to apply the inks using a good old blending tool and a circular motion. And because I've already gessoed the page, you can find that the inks will apply very easily. Now you could use Distress Oxides if you wanted for this page. You would get a slightly chalkier effect, but it would still look fabulous once it's finished. The first colour done. I can just pop my blending pad under the spot of velcro I've attached to the bottom of the ink pad and it's ready for next time I want to use it. And I'll just continue now and work with all the four colours I chose for my page. Once I've got the background complete, I've just picked up a texture stamp, I think this is an indigo blue, giving it a quick spritz of water and I'm stamping the water onto the page. Because Distress inks are water soluble, you can see that the water is actually lifting some of the ink to give us our stamp pattern on our page. Once we've finished, just get a heat tool and I'm giving it a quick dry off. So I'm now taking a baby wipe. Before I use it, I'm squeezing out any excess moisture in some kitchen roll because I don't want it too wet for this next technique. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dab the baby wipe through the stencil onto my page, removing small amounts of the ink. Notice I'm just dabbing, I'm not rubbing or scrubbing. That would take off a lot more ink than I want to at the moment. What I'm going for is more a subtle background effect. Now I'm going back with the same stencil and one of my original colors. And I'm just going to take some of that color through the stencil with my blending tool in a few areas onto my page. So now I've swapped to a different Tim Holtz layering stencil and I'm just applying a second colour to my page in a few different areas. So at this point when I looked at my page I just felt it was darker than I'd wanted. So I decided that I needed to remove some of the ink and the way I decided to do it was by taking my spritz bottle and spraying some water along the top of my page and just allowing that to run down the page. So as you can see, dissolving some of the ink with the water means the top of the page is a bit lighter now and I was happy with that. So I just dried that off with my good old heat tool. So next I decided I just wanted to add some simple stamped shapes. I didn't have an acrylic block so I used one of my Distress inks as my acrylic block and popped my cling stamp on there. I inked it up with some stays on and started stamping on my page. Now the stamp that I've used is a freebie from a magazine, but you could use any stamp you like to do this. So next I took my Stabilo Aquarellable Pencil in black and I just put some scribbly circles around each of the stamps. If you've watched my videos before, you will see that I quite often use these pencils. They write on paper, plastic, metal, glass, so they're really useful in art journaling. So next I just dip my little paintbrush into some water and went over the aquarellable pencil and you'll see that the water releases the pigment from the pencil and we get this fabulous black watercolour effect lying around our stamps. For the focal point on this page I wanted two tags but I don't have my die cut machine and dies here at home with me so I just took some stamping card and made my own tag shapes. An easy way to do it off the corner of your rectangle of card at roughly 45 degrees, keep a hold of the corner you cut off, turn it over and pop it on the other corner of your card and use that as a template to cut your corner. That way you end up with a nice even 
top to your tag. So once I've got the tags done, I've picked out three distress inks, this time in shades of blue and grey, and I'm going to use those to colour the tags. I just squished the ink stamps onto my wipe clean mat, or if you have a glass mat that you work on, that will do fine. I took my little water spritzer and spritzed a few drops of water onto the ink. And then it's just a case of getting my tag and squishing it into the ink and peel it off and you get a lovely effect with your colours there. Second time I took the smaller tag and this time I dragged it through the ink just to get a slightly different effect. I dried my tags off with a heat tool then I decided that I wanted to add some of the original colours to the tags just so they blended in a little better with my page. So I just squished some of my ink onto my wipe clean mat again, spritzed them with a bit of water then I picked up each tag and this time I just dabbed it into the ink. I didn't want to completely cover the blue, I just wanted to add some of the pink and purple onto the tag. I dried my tags off and decided I want to embellish them with some washi tape. The washi tape I'm using here is homemade washi tape and if you'd like to find out how to make your own washi tape, please check out our creative chicken nugget video on how to make washi tape using a gel plate. If you don't have a gel plate or you have some other washi tape you'd like to use, then you can do this step using any washi tape that you buy from your local craft store. Once the washi tape was applied, I just ran the edges of each tag through my black suit distress ink to make them stand out a little bit more from my journaling page. Next I decided how I wanted the tags to fit together on the page. I then stuck them together using some double sided tape. Of course you could use PVA glue here if that's what you prefer. I then grabbed my Posca pen and drew in the little hole at the top of my tags. If you have a hole punched to hand, obviously you could just chomp out that hole instead. Then, still with the Posca pens, I started adding the lettering of my sentiment to my tags. Sentiment all done, it was time to position the tags on the page. When I put my tags against my page, I felt they really didn't stand out enough. So I went back to my black suit distress ink, and this time I applied it around the edges of my tags using my blending tool. This way I get a bit of a heavier border around the edges, and hopefully the tags would stand out more from the page. So tags all done. All I have to do now is add them to my page. So again, I went back to my double-sided tape, stick them down. Of course, you could again use PVA glue or if you want them to stand out from your page a little bit, foam pads would do the job perfectly. Once I'd stuck down my tags, I went back to my Posca pen and just drew a string coming from the tags and the little loops and a bow to show where the string ended. my page just about complete but I felt I needed some kind of a border just to draw your eye into the center so again I went back to my black suit distress ink my blending tool and just took it around the edges of my page to darken them down and draw the eye to the center of the page so that's our page finished Thank you for crafting along with the Creative Chicken. 
If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and I hope to see you back again soon.